And I'm, I'm, I'm offended that there are members of this General Assembly that want to talk about the lengths of food pantry lines when the, the, we have failed to raise the minimum wage, when we have members of this Senate vote to gut the general assistance program, putting people back to work and rejuvenating an economy, that's doable. We cannot bring people back from the dead. That's impossible. And while we have this back and forth, um, losing customers is nothing compared to losing lives. It is Friday, April 17th, 2020. Welcome to Raging Chickens Out the Coop Podcast. This is Kevin Mahoney, editor and founder of Raging Chicken Press. Each week, I usually talk to our capital muckraker in chief, Sean Kitchen, about the good, the bad, and the ugly in state and national politics. But we've got a little bit of a, a touch and go situation here today, not in a bad way. Uh, my kids had a, uh, their teachers did a teacher parade uh, through all the neighborhoods in their cars. Um, and uh, so we were out there for that this morning. Um, it was it was moving, touching um, to see the the teachers and the principals and the people that have been so important in my kids' lives um, come by and my heart goes out to them. We miss them so much. They've been amazing. I know my kids miss them a ton. So uh, we're out there for that. And Sean had uh, an extended call that he had to be on today too as well. So the way we're going to work this today, I'm going to get this going. I'm going to send Sean an invite. And if he joins in, he joins in. You know, so we'll see. <laughs> um We'll see what he can do. Um, We'll go. But for now, I'm going to run through the headlines for the day. Today's show, Bernie endorses Biden. Then Warren endorses Biden. Warren's very happy that Bernie took the time that he needed, a couple days, uh, to endorse Biden. Glad to hear that, I guess. Uh, Other news was that Warren said that she would accept a vice president nomination from Biden if he would ask her. Told Rachel Matt all that this week. That was kind of some breaking news. Um, that has no correspondence with what people are projecting has actually been the case behind the scenes. I have my own thoughts on it, but we'll see. And the numbers came out. Over 22 million Americans have now filed for unemployment. The United States has more cases of coronavirus than the next four countries with the largest outbreaks combined. That's correct. The next four countries. So, if you take United States... The United States has a total, are you ready, 673,096 cases. The next highest is Spain at 188,000 cases. Italy comes in at 168. Remember when those back in the good old days when we were worried that we were going to follow Italy and follow that curve? We're way beyond that, folks. And rabid right-wing death cult enthusiasts protest stay-at-home orders and their restrictions on their individual American freedom. Notable protests took place in Michigan, Ohio, New York, and North Carolina featuring, you guessed it, don't tread on me banners, Confederate flags, guns, and Fox News talking points. They want to get back to work and embrace whatever the virus may bring. Not only does this show, however, the anti-human tendency at the base of the Republican Party... But it also shows the bankruptcy of right-wing ideology and the shock doctrine. I mean, you think about this for a second. In the wake of more than 30,000 deaths and staggering unemployment rates, some people think that their only choice, their only choice, is to risk their lives to get back to their crappy jobs. More protests are planned, though, for Texas, Oregon, California, and I'm hearing they might make some stops or make a little noise in Pennsylvania. We shall see. Crazy. And I'm sure as hell hope that somebody will be tracking these clusters of pro-pandemic tools that are out there conducting these things. And guess what? They're funded by the same right-wing cranks that funded the Tea Party. And according to a new Quinnipiac poll, 85% of Americans are either very concerned or somewhat concerned that they they or someone they know will get the coronavirus. That is up 31% from March. And a Pew Research poll found that 73% of Americans think that the worst impacts from the coronavirus are yet to come. 
And that same poll found that 66% worry that the government will lift restrictions too soon, worsening the outbreak. That poll also found that that something around the same similar percentage, around 66, think that the government was too slow in getting things going. So take that, American freedom protesters. Today's PA focus has been a big news week in Pennsylvania. Uh, matter of fact, Pennsylvania is breaking through to the national um, um, national news programs, or particularly for the outbreak in nursing homes. Um, uh, Valerie Arkush from uh, the uh, PA44 down in Montgomery County had was on the Rachel Maddow show the other night on Wednesday. But on Thursday, the PA Department of Health reported that the Commonwealth has 1,245 new coronavirus cases, bringing the total in the state to 27,735. And at least 707 people have died as a direct result of the coronavirus. About half of PA deaths have occurred in nursing homes, which is causing alarm across the state. All residents of the Montgomery County-based nursing home, Phoebe Wincote, had to be evacuated to a facility in Lehigh County because so many of the staff, the staff tested powers positive for the virus. There was no staff. As of Wednesday, 77 nursing home residents have died at 64% of all the deaths in Montco. 306 long-term care facilities have, con- have confirmed coronavirus cases, and at least 3,290 residents and at least 394 employees have been infected, and at least 365 long-term care deaths have been reported. The PA GOP continues to be committed to the crazy train. Governor Wolf yesterday announced plans to veto a bill passed by the Republican legislator that would have businesses opening sooner than Wolf's April 30th date. And I got to think that this was purposely put into there, knowing that it was going to get vetoed ahead of these freaking nut job protests that are on their way. But on Monday, protesters from reopen Pennsylvania will be doubling down. Oh, it is Monday. Uh, Sean did put something in here. Look at that. Uh, on Monday, protesters for reopen Pennsylvania will be doubling down on the PA GLP and Trump's rhetoric on reopening the economy. This is an astroturf movement, as I was saying above, that is connections to Betsy DeVos funded organizations in Michigan. These people are nuts. Hey, but there's good news for anti planet industries. Yeah, Shell. Shell. You know, Shell bastion of humanitarianism says that it will bring back 500 workers to the Beaver County Cracker Plant next week um, to continue construction on their power plant. Yeah, they found a nice little loophole in the close in the um, the uh, closure orders um, so that they could open up. Beaver County has been one of the places that has seen the recent spikes in coronavirus cases, by the way. Just those things are not connected whatsoever. And in today's last call, uh, this week, NASA is celebrating the 50th anniversary of Apollo 13's, quote, successful failure. Apollo 13 launched on April 11th, 1970, in an attempt to bring a third crew of U.S. astronauts to the moon. However, just three days into the mission, an explosion vented much of that ship's oxygen into supply into the space. Into space, The crew carried out a harrowing emergency return to Earth in one of the most dramatic stories of the early space race. And of course, yes, Tom Hanks played the lead in the movie. But given the coronavirus shutdowns, NASA has basically released a documentary called Apollo 13 Home Safe, and that is available free online. You can, if you want to check it out, I think it's about half an hour, 40 minutes or so, uh, using a lot of the original footage um, from there. It's really cool. Uh, I just checked it out last night, and um, it's worth checking out. Um, the link is in the show notes. And yes, closer to home, Garcia Forest is back at Free Will Brewing, and it's available for pickup in their online store. Garcia's Forest is a hazy IPA brewed with flaky, flaky, uh, flaked oats and wheat. Got to slow down here. Hopped with Citra, Mosaic, and Chinook. No milk sugar in this one. But it's a bit of a cross between, say, a New Age hazy IPA and classic West Coast renditions, according to Free Will. Full on body and flavor with notes of dank grapefruit, tangelo, white peach, and honeydew melon. That comes in at 7.1 ABV. And they are also very, very psyched to be offering the Current Cider, which is, we've been talking about that on the show for the past couple of weeks. Um, but Current Cider Mimosa, that is a dry, bubbly cider with orange, and it's also available in their online store. You can pick that up. But this is the first time that they'll be offering this one, offering this one out of the tap room. And uh, that will be joining up the current lines of those ciders with uh, the Bees and Earth, uh, which are both awesome. Reminder that Free Will is open for takeout and pickup every day in Perk C from 12 to 6. You can check them out at www.freewillbrewing.com slash store. 
And remind everybody, tune in to The Rick Smith Show on Free Speech TV this and every Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern. You can stream the show live at freespeech.org. You can also tune in to the Dish Network, Direct TV, or through the Free Speech TV app on Roku. And make sure you download The Rick Smith Show's daily podcast on iTunes, Podbean, wherever you get your podcasts. If we want a progressive future, we need progressive media. You can help support Pull No Punches, homegrown progressive media today. Become a member of Raging, Chicken's, Ra- Raging Chicken for as little as 5 bucks a month. Just go to patreon.com slash rcpress and choose your membership level. We're looking for ways to expand our network as we prepare for the fight for our lives, literally, and the fight for the future in 2020. We're all in for that fight, but we need you. We're not asking you to break the bank. We're asking you to become a member for the price of a good beer once a month. Help take keep the moody uh, help keep the media in the movement, the movement in the media. Become a member for as little as five bucks by going to patreon.com slash RC Press today. Yeah, I guess the uh, uh, this kind of like switching around and uh, kind of lack of schedule schedule <laughs> kind of stuff is kind of uh, flipping me upside down here. I'm a little bit uh, not uh, discombobulated is not the right word, but just kind of a little bit um not firing on all cylinders, maybe. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Um, do you ever wake up on a day, you just wake up on a day, and you're just kind of annoyed at the beginning of the day? It was kind of a day like that for me. Um, and uh, I was very happy, actually, that um, um, we got to see this. I mentioned at the top of the show, the uh, teacher's parade from Guth Elementary School came through the neighborhoods, and uh, it was really touching them. It was like, seriously, these teachers are awesome. Um, and these teachers are, are just, you know, what they're doing to kind of trying to stay connected to um their students and to kids and um by doing these online you know you know it's really triage it's like educational triage um because anyone who sits there to kind of pretend that moving these classes online is going to be the same thing um as as like regular schooling is just you know they're just kidding themselves and wishing you know doing a whole bunch of happy talk um but meanwhile these teachers are really busting their butts to um try to stay the connected um to students it's just it's just it's incredible and i set up my sincere thanks to all of them um and you know, the perk city police and uh the fire department um, it's a volunteer fire department here um they were also out there with them leading the parade and um thanks to all them and to all the kind of teachers and first responders that are everywhere that um you know and grocery store workers and delivery people um you know i, I just this should just kind of really shine a light on um the people that really should be at the front of our economy, not ones who are struggling to get by and um, are being kind of like, you know, the targets of, of cut, gut and punish all the time. I mean, if uh, seeing these folks today kind of go go through our neighborhoods and kind of make those connections to my kids and for the neighbors and everything is like, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's about time that we put workers and people who are kind of actually doing work that matters um at the forefront of our economy and our society because this is uh they deserve it folks they really deserve it anyways uh that little bit of sound that you heard in the intro intro music today was from katie muth um that was katie muth's response to republicans uh attempts to reopen the government against to governor tom wolf what he has to say because you know they got this big protest coming up on monday and they you know they want to kind of get in good with trump and uh, so they thought, want to do kind of a bunch of theatrics and, you know, put everybody else at risk. That's, you know, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if they get their political talking points and their ideological purity. Um, it'll kind of, they'll tell everybody else, you know, just like the old, I swear to God, there's like, um, back in the old, back in the old days, um, when there was, um, you ever hear that the expression pie in the sky? Well, it came from like, uh, there's this great song um it's, utah phillips uh did a version of this song i believe it was um i forget who did the original but um basically it's it's a you know talk about the salvation army right um it says you know you will lead by and by um you, to that that glorious time in the sky um work you know live and pray work and pray um you'll get pie in the sky when you die the whole idea right it was that the way that the salvation army played a pivotal role in um, kind of putting band-aids on situation for workers, um, especially workers who are attempting to organize um, for for a better world. Um, and that whole idea about the pie in the sky is like, you know, hey, <clears throat> just keep on plugging away, work hard, you know, suffer, suck it up, do all that kind of stuff. And then in the end, uh, you know, you, you'll be paid off in the end, right? And that's what they want us to believe. They want us to believe that um, we're going to get our payoff in the future, that we shouldn't be fighting for the present. And uh if it's anything we've learned, if you learned, listen to this show, is that, you know, that's a principle that we fundamentally disagree with here. 
Um, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, this is this is kind of where we are. So um, we're going to try, like I said, something a little bit different because we had a, a crazy schedule right now. Um, and Sean had a long call that he had to go on, and um, I had that that um, parade. So what I'm attempting to do right now is basically um, invite Sean. If he can make out make it on for a little bit, that's great. Um, if you can't, you know, then um, I'll just I'll kind of try to keep it concise for you all here too as well. So I'm going to send him that invite right now. If he can make it, he indicates that he's around, but uh, we'll, we shall see. Okay, so uh, like I said, off the top, big news in the presidential front this morning um, or this week, I should say, um, and that is uh, Bernie um, endorsed Joe Biden, and then Warren kind of followed the next day and endorsed Joe Biden. I don't think this is anything that um, should have come of surprise to anybody. I mean, um, Bernie has indicated from the get go that whoever the you know nominee was that he was going to support. Um, he said he was suspending his campaign. He was getting out of the presidential race. And so, um, you know, if, if uh, Bernie is nothing, if not um, kind of good on his word. All right. So it looks like Sean is uh, trying to get here. We're going to kind of see if he'll come in. And I'm admitting him to the Zoom call. Yeah, there he is. Uh, Sean Kitchen has uh, begun to join us here at the uh, on the podcast. So as he's getting his sound up and running, um, I'm just I'll kind of continue on where I was going. Um so, you know, I don't think it's any surprise to anybody that Bernie uh, came out and endorsed Biden. Warren's going to endorse and Warren endorsed Biden. Um, there's been a lot of kind of, like, you know, kind of, you know, circle firing squad crap going on this week where everybody just wants to go out and kind of say, you know, how Bernie sold out or Elizabeth Warren sold out or how, you know, blah, 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 like 2016 and blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I frankly just think it's, uh, you know, I understand people's frustrations. I understand where kind of uh, where they come from. Um, I there's you're not going to find a whole lot of people that kind of dislike Joe Biden uh, a lot more than I do. I'm not a big fan at all. Um, and but you know, and we can have this argument to we're blue in the face if you want. Um, that's fine with me. Um, but uh, I, I do think there's a difference between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, uh, or Joe Biden administration. Um, the idea is that I think Cornell West, Cornell West was on um, Michael Moore show this week on Rumble. And uh, basically, I think he put it um, he put it right. If our choice is between kind of like like rabid neoliberalism, excuse me, rabid neoliberalism blah, 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 in Biden or rabid neo fascism, I'll take the rabid neoliberalism. Right. But we should be no not try to pretend that uh, Joe Biden is anything other than what he is um, and that all that indicates for us. I mean, you know, Michael Brooks also made this point this week that, look, the left is uh the left has uh, suffered defeats across the globe, right? Whether you're talking about in England, you're talking about the United States, you're talking about Brazil, you're talking about Spain, um, one after the other. Um, so th- this is not a time where we just kind of simply say, oh, okay, we get to choose whatever the heck that we want. No, this is the time for organization. This is a time for organizing um, and kind of uh, basically carrying through. And I think um, um, so Megan Day um, and Michael Utrecht were arguing this week in uh, in these times, I believe, or Jackman, rather, um, that, you know, look, um, Bernie started the movement, but it's our movement, <laughs> basically. You know, the rest is up to us. Uh, he got things going, and so I think that's what that's what we need to do. And I think the fact that we're in the middle of this coronavirus outbreak and the fact that we're seeing over 22 million Americans now filing for unemployment on people out of work, um, things are going to continue to get bad as we kind of move forward. Um, and I don't think we should have, um, any delusions, um, about some sort of, uh, unicorn coming out of the woodworks, um, or uh, pretense that Joe Biden is somehow going to have some sort of, you know, like come to Jesus moment and become a, prog- uh, pro- a kind of a radical progressive. That's not going to happen either. Uh, it's only going to be us. It's going to be our fight. There is no one that is the backstop. We are our own backstops at this point. Um, and that's where we move. But anyways, it looks like we've had a successful join from uh, Sean. Uh, Sean, uh, glad you could stop in, man. Thank you very much. How's everything going? You know, it is what it is. I, I was saying before uh, before you got on that, uh, you know, I got to watch this parade with, with my, my kids' uh, teachers and staff at the schools, and it was touching. It really was. I mean, it was touching, and, uh, you know, we had these big signs that we had made, and so did the neighbors came out and things to get the mind. Of course, social distanced, right? Everyone's kind of far away. The parade happened. Teachers were in their individual cars, and, uh, you know, a lot of tears were shed. Let me just put it that way because it was um, on all sides. 
Yeah, so I'll be going to my own parade on uh, a Monday. On Monday, it. yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I gave I gave the intro for that. Why don't Why don't we start right there with because uh, because like well, let's put it this way. So here's this part here. This um, as you heard me reading through through today in the intro. I was talking about, as I was saying, the rabid right-wing death cult enthusiasts um, that are pro-pandemic. Um, they've been out in force protesting um, kind of like in Michigan, Ohio, New York, and North Carolina with their Don't Tread on Me banners, Confederate flags, guns, and Fox News talking points, all that's kind of out there. Um, and um, I, I said, you know, they're on their way, and that I heard tell that uh, there was in Pencil- uh, that they're on the way in Pennsylvania. And when I got down to read the part, and Sean had kind of put stuff in there, and then sure enough, uh, they are coming to Pennsylvania. So why don't we pick it up right there? Yes. So I think we should start off with um, big picture. What happened in Ohio, um, in Michigan, Wisconsin, North Carolina? You know, you're seeing uh, right wingers going after governors who either support uh, stay at home shelters. Or are they have Republican legislatures with uh, re- with a Democratic opposition governor, such as uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania? Also, the three big key swing states uh, that are going to be needed for uh, twenty twenty, and you know, kind of looks like a grassroots movement, but it really isn't. Uh, what these reopen uh, in scare quotes, uh, these reopen campaigns, uh, these are most definitely. Um, AstroTurf movements from right-wing organizations, uh, the ones in uh, Michigan, uh, the organization that flaunted this, uh, first started it, uh, has financial connections to Betsy DeVos. Um, in Pennsylvania, we're seeing right-wing uh, hacks and right and the Commonwealth Foundation staff members and people within our own right-wing infrastructure promote this uh, reopen Pennsylvania rally. It's going to be happening on uh, Monday. And no, it's th- this is... Um, look at look, think of this as the second wave of the Tea Party. That's what I think That's, they want it to be, at least, right? Yes, and no, this is most definitely going to be. Um, this is most definitely astroturfed, and this is de- most definitely astroturfed by billionaire organizations, probably connected to uh, state policy network affiliations like the Commonwealth Foundation, uh, like Tea Party groups like um, Heritage and uh, Americans for Prosperity and stuff like that. And expect these people to jump on these movements um, and, you know, fanning these flames. Uh, no, this is not a grassroots movement. Um, this is all AstroTurf. This is being pushed by Republicans. This is being pushed by the conservative infrastructure. And on Monday, we're going to be seeing the same thing here in Pennsylvania. Well, Sean, I, you know, I'm curious for your take on this because I, my thought is, you know, once I saw those protests kick up, that put into into a whole different um, kind of uh, perspective for me what this uh, like SB 316 was all about coming out um, um, this week. The, the attempts to try to get. Um, to override um, Wolf's orders and kind of reopen Pennsylvania. Now I look at this, like, initially I just thought it was, like, okay, this is a bunch of the PA Republicans trying to kind of out-crazy themselves. But now I'm no, reminded of where we were in effort. twenty yeah 2011 as that legislation was put in at the time because they knew that these protests were going to be launching, and it's part of just a political sham um, that's putting us all at risk. Yes. I would not be surprised if this was... Uh, something that was conjured up by the Trump political team with over the past few weeks. Um, you know, you didn't really see anything with uh, with with Republicans pushing us until two weeks ago. Um, and it just seemed like the right from the get go, they weren't supporting workers. Uh, They're supporting uh, bosses and pretty much like what these bills are designed to do is to kill your workers. Yep. This is to kill people like this is not. And the whole week, uh, Republicans were getting upset uh, when they were um, getting pushed back on, online about this messaging, especially about killing people. But no, like this is what this does. This is putting your employees lives at risk uh, for the employer profits. That's right. And, and, and I played. What, and, yep. And I played at the um, in the intro today. It's like uh, what I had. The sound that I had in the intro today was from Katie Muth. Um, basically, um, her kind of response um, and argument against this, um, you know, against this bill kind of as part of their kind of Zoom session um, and saying exactly this. Right. Is like, look, we can get the economy going again. That's something that we can do. Right. What we can't is bring people back from the dead. Right. And that's what the bill is kind of set out to do. 
Yeah. Right. Um, and also in the House uh, this week, Republicans ruled amendments giving workers, front frontline workers, PPEs, hazard pay, paid sick leave. They ruled all those amendments out of order uh, for this bill in Senate Bill 613. So while they were trying to claim that they care about workers and getting paychecks back into people's pockets, uh, they completely shot down any effort put forth by Democrats to provide workers with actual with actual fucking safety. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, no, it's it it, it is astounding. Um I was truly shocked this week watching them do this. Like, I didn't think the Republicans would want to do this in a in a contested election year. You know, usually in Harrisburg, things fly pretty smoothly through the budgets. Um, you know, what happened with Wolf is it was an outlier in 2015. But, you know, uh, during election years, uh, Republicans and the legislature kind of want to get things done pretty smooth. It usually flies through pretty smoothly. Yep. Um, I don't see that happening. I feel like they have staked this flag in the ground. And no, they're not going to be moving from it. And this is a you got this is one hundred percent this is one hundred percent a coordinated effort, most likely from the Trump campaign or the national GOP, with the help of billionaire financiers. This is not a grassroots movement. Uh, what's going to be happening in Pennsylvania on Monday is dangerous, but uh, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Better have your uh, mask on, man. I, I'm actually going to the uh, – once I get off here, I'm going to go to the hardware store downtown in Harrisburg. Apparently, they have a bunch of masks and gloves available. I'll be going down there and getting some face masks and stuff like that. Yeah, do it. Uh, biggest thing I, I strongly recommend if they have any kind of eye protection or face protection, like one of those shields, those are in very, very short supply um, because uh, – just because I, I – I, again – this is like uh, no. These are people who will spit in your that's face. That's what I'm saying. Literally do it. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's like uh, it's yeah. like uh, there were some reports that were coming up. That I saw up on Twitter about people doing. They exactly were spitting and call phone things everywhere, and we were right. talking about this last. You were talking about this last yep. week. You know, uh, no. The, this is to intentionally stoke the flames. This is intentionally to rile up your libertarian groups, rile up your anti-government militia groups, rile up Proud Boys and stuff like that. This is what the Republicans are doing, and they're they. This is what they're embracing. Like yep. this is a fascist like movement that they're that they're supporting right now. It's crazy. You know that the one the one thing I, I you look at I had I had to step away from some things like step away from some of the um, the particular political stuff that was going on and policy stuff that was going on this week because it was so like off the charts horrible and. So what I mean by that is like not only like I was saying kind of in the intro today is like not only do we have an over 600 over 637,000 um, um, cases of coronavirus over 30,000 deaths so far um, in this country is that um, w- the these quote, quote unquote stimulus or relief packages that have been, been being passed throughout in, in Washington, um, they are just like shams. They are like absolute giveaways um, and completely insufficient. Uh, programs to help out people. Yeah, and I think I think for me, when I heard Steve Mnuchin kind of like trying to explain and make a case for um, how these are going to help kind of like everyday people, I just like I was like I, I, I can't. It's like because because as bad as it was in 2010 after the Tea Party victory in in 2011, right? Is that we knew we've talked about this extensively. We knew that the consequence. Of what they were doing about in terms of gutting public services, about gutting health insurance, about going after all these other public institutions, trying to gut the EPA, all that kind of stuff. We said, we talked about how this is going to have long term impacts on people and it's going to eventually get a result in people getting killed, dying. And this is the replay of that, except to like exponentially worse, because you actually have a real virus which will kill people immediately. They're playing for all the marbles now. They're playing for exactly, exactly. No, this is this this is like end game fascism right that, here. Thank you. That's exactly right. No, like this is this is where this is the road you're seeing. It's going down. I mean, like, in what other like fucked up society do we actually like talk about risking lives of workers, of family members as a legitimate response to getting the economy back up and going? Like what, what? What they're going to be doing is they're going to be starving. The they're going to starve. They're they're, they're going to ride this out as long as possible without another bailout and see what happens. They are pushing. I I feel like that they are pushing for civil discontent 
as an actual political move to either have a military response, uh, you know, a martial law response. This is what I've been to, saying. I mean, or to um, have this go so fucking out of control where the, having the elections in November will, will be impossible. Look, I, I, up until I mean, at, at this point, at this point, there's one one or two options left. Right. And uh, frankly, I, I think both of them are on the table. I mean, you saw everything. You saw them put all their eggs in the basket in Wisconsin and lost. But I mean, like they're funding lawyer. They're gonna have. They're gonna be sending lawyers around the country to go after vote by mail initiatives. They've already it said it. I mean, for, Trump already announced yes. it as part of one of his briefings. Yeah. No. I mean, like, and they're, no, they're in the open about this. Yep. While you have the Republicans in Pennsylvania sending people vote by mail applications. Jesus. Yep. To like. To all their, to everyone on their their mailing lists. Yep. So I mean, I'm telling you, this is like I. I, I no, 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 no. I, I feel like with these reopen protests, you know, I feel like once May first comes around, Trump is like, do you're seeing this on Twitter? Uh, he put "Liberate Michigan" in all caps on his Twitter account this morning. Like he is pushing these people, these far right white nationalist proud boy groups, uh, to a violent political he's encouraging political terrorism right. pretty much i mean and, look I mean, we have we're, we're at this point where this is I, you know I, i'm glad to hear you talk about this because it's uh it's i, I don't mean, feel been, i don't feel quite as crazy right now i'm mean, going to put it like, or or is kind of like there were moments this week i'm saying okay i'm just being irrational right but i mean it's literally by yesterday yesterday i got to the point where i was just like hearing kind of discussions of look well-meaning people talking about okay we're gonna this is gonna take some time before we can get back to normal and i keep on hearing this kind of calls to get back to normal and it's turning my stomach because like joe biden well not just joe biden right i mean i think i mean i mean it's happening yes obviously about the kind of the, the return to normality that that, that whole campaign that, is built that, on. that is such but I mean, a but i mean i'm even talking about like you know, I like emails that I get from work, right? Emails I get like, and people making the assumption, the wrong assumption, I would argue, that okay, here's this thing. This is going to be a crisis for a while, and then it's going to peak and it's going to come back, and then we're going to get back to the way things were before. That is not what is happening. What is happening right now, what the Republicans are doing in Washington, D.C., and what is being echoed right here in Pennsylvania and across this country is that they are saying, like you said, they are playing for all the marbles. The money that is being dished out right now to the, the biggest corporations on the planet, some that are not even located in the United States, and the, the, the free money that is getting passed to them, while even small businesses and everyone else is meant to kind of crawl through kind of like like these like byzantine like dungeons to get the the scraps at the bottom of this this is i'm telling you this is like no, what they, happened they, in 2000 on steroids and they're encouraging they're playing off of people's economic fears they're playing exactly off people that's exactly who are, they're playing off of people who don't have their jobs right now who have been laid off from work and who like they are probably still waiting for their fucking stimulus check and like these people no they're, they're playing on the economic fears and the, this rally that's going to be happening, these rallies that are happening, this end game, in my opinion, is to, to incite political violence from the right. I don't see any other, and, other reason incite, for it. And incite political violence in the right as a way to take over. Yes. Uh, to, to really, like, cause an actual constitutional crisis. Um, I mean, like, we've seen this before in the 1920s in, you know, brown shirts and stuff like that. They didn't. These people went through the fucking streets and were fighting people and were beating people up and causing terror in communities throughout Europe. This is the same. This is going to be the same playbook, in my opinion. Right. This is this is kind of like a a, a, a this, this is, is like, like brown shirts going through Rome, brown shirts, like Mussolini's brown shirts marching on Rome and stuff like that. Like, well, I would argue that things. like I would argue what what makes this what makes this say different, right? Historically different, right? I don't believe it is kind of like, you know, I don't believe we're going to see the same kind of stuff that we saw back then, but the logic is identical. Now, yeah. what they've learned, however, is like this is like taking a page from the shock doctrine, right? This is taking a page from the shock doctrine and applying it to political practice. It's like so instead of causing economic crisis and then by coming in, this is like basically setting up what say if you think about what Richard Dixon had to 
to deal with, right? Is that Richard Nixon ran on this law and order stuff. Why? Because there was a legitimate crisis that was happening within the status quo and the establishment. That had to do with the civil rights movement. That had to do with the kind of like the progressive, the, the liberals that were kind of like, with the feminist movement. And people felt that crisis. And then he used basically racist overtones as a way of kind of call for law and order. If you ever hear law and order, usually what that means is that's a subjugation for that. That's a that's a, 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 a racist dog whistle. That means to kind of suppress to brown people, right, and black people, right, and anybody who doesn't quote unquote belong here, right, that's what that's about. And so what they're doing right now is precisely setting the stage for that. So, you know, come back and, you know, come back to this show in freaking six months, right, and tell us that we're crazy, okay? I, I, I would like to, I would like to hear also, that. also, I mean, like, these are the same groups I've been following for the past four or five exactly. years in Harrisburg. Exactly. Um, I mean, like, I wouldn't be surprised if Proud Boys show up on Monday, um, No, I mean, like, this is the type of thing I'm going with, face masks, helmet, and stuff like that. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, like, no, I mean, like, this is the type of thing where it's like, this is dangerous. These people are going to be inciting violence. Uh, They're going to be playing on people's economic hardships. And, you know, like, who knows what they're going to do? So let's let's put this also in context. We were talking about this economic fear. Is that why fear could be so debilitating? Right? Is it it detracts us from kind of what else is going on? This is what I mean when when Sean is talking about playing for all the marbles. This is a perfect example. of This. I mean, like, if also, it, they have the large. This is the, the the biggest, the most spending the federal government has ever done in American history. Right now, they are just kind of like spending, and they're they're. You don't hear people say, "Well, how are we going to pay for it?" No. This should show the entire sham of that argument right now. Trillions and trillions of dollars are going out to support large corporations. And yes, some of it will go back. We'll get little crumbs for the rest of us. Right. Some of that will go in to kind of support up the industry. Some of that will go to kind of first responders and hospitals and stuff like that. That's necessary. Right. But the big chunk of money that's coming out there, there's nobody paying for that. That is because, as we've talked about on this program, right, we have a fiat currency. Right. The federal government can do this without having us go into debt. But I guarantee this, they are going to try to use it to put the squeeze in us when we're done and pretend that now they have all this debt. and There's nothing that they can do but cut, gut and punish. That's where we're going. And then also in um, Pennsylvania, we're seeing it now. Uh, Scott Martin is proposing legislation to start gutting the Apache schools and actually start forcing closures yep. of the state universities. Yep. Uh, we have the right wing infrastructure pushing for the privatization of the state stores, the liquor system. Um, We have the right-wing infrastructure pushing for the privatization, more privatization of public education by expanding charter, uh, cyber charters in this state. Um, No, I mean, like, they are going, you have um, Metcalf asking to repeal regulations from the DEP. Um, They're going after the IIRC, which is the Independent Regulatory Commission. Um, Independent Review Regulatory Commission, uh, which sets, um, which is a really wonky board in Harrisburg. It's but they're regulators and they're trying to deregulate. They're trying to attack the regulators um, as way to fixing the budget. Um, no, I mean like we we see what's happening. They're not doing anything to protect workers. These are all handouts for the bosses. I know, like these people, like. The counter, the, the most effective counter message is just saying the truth. These people want to kill you and your family. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, after saying that on Twitter all week, it pissed off a lot of Republicans. And it put them into a box that made them uncomfortable. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, well-deserved box, I have to say. You know, uh, you want to kill us for your donors' making. profits. That's right. That's right. I mean, I don't know what you say about it. I mean, like, this is just like... That, that's, uh, the most, that's the most apolitical talking point you can come up with, with, like, this bill. Um, they're using excuses saying that rural communities aren't getting um, hit by this. So, like, these counties should be able to make their own decisions and not the governor for making across the whole entire state. So, really, like, they want to, ha- like, you know, you, ha- you have, like, three or four hospital beds get taken up in a rural hospital and there's a lot more corona cases a lot of people are going to die in the in rural parts of this this state because of this legislation and they don't care and wolf's going to veto it wolf will veto the other bill it got through and then um they're going to piecemeal uh bills going through for separate industries yep for the car dealers and stuff like that so they can use this as a 
as an election talking point in twenty in twenty twenty. This is what they're using this. This is what they're using these bills for. They're using these bills for to swing the election, yep. and to like have the Republicans hold on to power. I mean, we have to come up with a th- with an effective counter message. Like these are the death panels. Like that's how dirty. That's how we have to roll up our sleeves, and that's how, frankly, low we have to punch down at this point. But that's but this. that's not even that's not even punching down. I mean, this is legit. Yeah. I mean, yes, there's not something with a name that says death panels on it, but I mean, what the hell's going on? I mean, that's what that's what's happening right now. Yeah. I mean, this is like this, you know, the difference between, you know, this is where kind of like reality matters, right? Um, you know, and the fact that like the the death panels are the ones that were just, I mean, I don't did you see that story about like I mean, the images that are going through my my brain right now are things like like out in Beaver County, Pennsylvania, right? That they just kind of basically refroze the ice rink. Right. Because as a temporary morgue, because there is there are massive amounts of coronavirus um, um, cases that are going through the nursing homes out there. And this is not this is not specific to Beaver County, Pennsylvania. This is happening across the state and across the country because there's not enough space in local morgues for bodies. Right. I mean, that is that is devastating. The fact that you have you had you had more than half or about half of the deaths in Pennsylvania are happening in nursing homes. I have, look, my brother-in-law works in a nursing home, right? My sister-in-law is kind of in and out of nursing homes all the time. She works in hospice, right? My wife's in the medic, you know, I mean, it, you know, it, it's you know, doing tests in full gear of people with coronavirus right now, right? And so these are, you know, I didn't need this to hit home. Like, like you know what you know what I'm saying? I mean, because like I... I, I my, aunt, my aunt's in the hospital right now. She's on oxygen. Thankfully, she's not on a ventilator and she's responding. But it's like, no, I mean, like, it's something like we're talking about. Like, this is going to be like a very traumatizing experience. And it's like, you know, like, uh, I mean, it's like my mom was talking about. She's like, we're not even going to be able to have a proper burial if my aunt passes away. I know. (laughs) Like, I mean, like, that's how. Yeah. No, I mean, like this is this is what it, this is what it's actually happening, and I feel like it's gonna, you know, like people telling those stories to actually like make a difference. I, I do, um, but Sean. I, mean, I like, agree with you one hundred percent. I mean, like someone, uh, uh, f- f- person I went to Kutztown with. She's a Republican lobbyist in Harrisburg. She posted on Instagram this week that one of her classmates from Kutztown died, like at thirty from coronavirus. Like it, you're, you're like starting to see like these stories pop up of people getting it. Um, you know, in Harrisburg this week, we just lost a school board member who was a social worker in his fifties. Um, was never never met him, but um, you know, got involved with the school board and apparently like one of the best people to be around like with politics. An extremely well respected me- member of the African American community. Um, been involved in Harrisburg grassroots stuff for like 20 years as a social worker and he got it and passed away i mean like it's starting to actually like hit home for us yeah i know i mean it's no it's <clears throat> I, I just think you know it's uh it's it's a devastating thing and it's uh it's something that i i, I mean i i, I don't actually, think i, I I'm, a, I'm an absolutely disbelief mm-hmm. that these bills are happening this week it's 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 it, it's been blowing my mind. It's been blowing my mind. It's I mean, like I've been in Harrisburg for five years. I've never, I would. Ne- I, this was the last thing on my head. I, I actually did not think they would go through with it, with such a fucking party line vote. You have Republicans in the southeast voting for this shit. Are you fucking kidding me? It's disgusting. You fucking pieces of shit. Yep. Like you, you, you like pieces of fucking shit in the southeast. Republicans. The last people who are holding on to this majority in the Republican caucus, you know, you, you could have sunk that bill if you wanted to by voting against it. And you fuckers had you, you allowed Terzai to do this. A lame duck. Yeah, no, I. No, I mean, like, yep. I, I have I have I have absolute no. Um, I, I've reached a point this week on social media. I'm sure you've been noticing. I have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I have reached a point of zero fucks for these mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And at this point, I have zero respect for mm-hmm. these people. Because th- this past week showed who they really are. And I don't I don't give a fuck about these people. Like, you know what I mean? Yep. Fuck them. That's it. They're dead. Yep. They're fucking scabs. Like, you're a scab, you'll always be a scab. That's it. Yep. 
I mean, what else you say? You know what I'm saying? I mean, seriously. <laughs> I mean, like, lo- like legitimately is like, uh, that's what it is. I you mean, cross I, the I, picket line. You're like, like you cross the line. You're, 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 you are a scab for the rest of your life. Well, look, this much. is something that Rick, this is something that Rick Smith has always talked about, right? He always tells a story about the guy across the street that nobody talks to that he grew up with, right? And his grandfather's t- t- talking about how, you know, the reason why that nobody talks to him, you ever wonder why? Well, it's because he was a scab. And I'll tell you right now, is that I, I had some people who were friends of mine uh, at, at Kutztown um, that when we went out, when we went out on strike in 2016, that they crossed the line. I haven't spoken them to, to them since, and I won't, because uh, and I think that's that. I, I mean, we're at that we're at that kind of point. Is that if you are not going to be there for each other, then you know what? Then you have just opted out of the human family. I'm sorry. Yeah. But I, you know, Sean, I, I, I just, uh, I don't know. I, I am just I've been I, I can't say you know surprised is the is the wrong word um, and then also I guess another thing we should talk about this week yeah I mean you also have speaking about people who opted out of the human family long ago I mean you have people at the Commonwealth Foundation like Matt Briette mm-hmm. uh, making fun of people who can't get uh, protective gear so he posted on his Facebook page him wearing a menstrual pad on his face That's and said my wife so funny <laughs> um, I, I can't tell if that was funny or not. <laughs> no, that was that was one hundred percent like dripping sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, and, and like, I mean, he thought it was funny. I know that's and, what I mean. It's like you know, it's like you're hilarious, he, you little bald buck. And then he he posted a picture of him wearing a sponge over his mouth. He thought that was funny as well. Um, you know, he he he, you know, like the these are the people who are leading this movement. This anti-science, you know, third wave COVID denying that the coronavirus isn't even happening, like trutherism. Well, like, it's what, but look, people, I mean, like, and and like, I mean, like, yeah, this guy thought it was great putting a maxi pad on his face and taking a picture of it. Well, this While is like he look, doesn't have to go to work. He's making five hundred thousand dollars a year. Yep. He can work from the confines of his home, and his organization does not believe that frontline workers should be making fifteen dollars an hour, should be getting hazard pay, should be able to join a union, or should have health care. Right. No, exactly. 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 These. Uh, I'll keep my dark thoughts to myself on this one, but um, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. What concerns me, I'll tell you this right now. It's like I, I we we talked about this a little bit on the show before. It's like we had the uh, at Kutztown we started this, this healthy campus, the healthy healthy campus bill of rights, and uh, kind of before spring break, before everything kind of got really crazy with the, uh, and the shutdowns kind of came in and everything like this, and we've been kind of now reconnecting and rethinking about kind of where we go from here and so on. Um, but one of the things that is um, is is concerning to me is that I don't know. I I really do not have a sense if we actually have the political muscle and capacity um, to deal with this moment in our history. And I worry that it is going to take just the massive crisis before people get their heads right. I mean, I, I again, go back to what Rick Smith said. I mean, it's a little bit different context. He's saying, you know, um, you know, when people's stomachs get empty, their head gets right. Um, I, I've never really liked that saying because it, it's a very kind of pessimistic view of kind of what it's going to take to get movements. Um, but, I, you know, I worry about that. And at the same time, right, I also know that there's people that are, are plugging away and doing kind of amazing kinds of work in the midst of this. It's just one of the things that has this the uh, the pandemic has really kind of thrown into the mix is that the kind the ways in which we would organize or protest or kind of engage in political action at this point are not available to us right i mean sure we can we can like make phone calls to our legislators we can do this stuff but in terms of gathering mass gatherings we can't do that in terms of kind of like you know having meetings where you're kind of like you know kind of batting around ideas sure you can do some of that on zoom and some of these other platforms but um it's just different, so I, I don't know where this where this is going to go. And um, to go back to where you know something you were bringing up before is I look at the way that the stage is set right now. 
Um, and even if we don't end up going kind of like into to, to full fledged kind of like, you know, military shutdown is like there were times which I was thinking that, um, and, we, you know, you and I have talked about this before, too, as well, is that this coronavirus stuff was going to be the thing that could be the death knell in, in say, Trump's reelection campaign. Now, um, you I know, still believe like, that's true. Well, uh, yes, but I believe that's remember, true. I think. But let me, let me just finish my thought. It's like, but the concern there is that um, kind of what we have talked about before is like, you know, um, the wild animal is most dangerous when it's back into a corner. And the fact that it is kind of um, like making, say, kind of like proto-fascist arguments at this point and setting the stage for things that if we're in any other country, we'd be worried about things like military coups and those other kinds of stuff. The fact that it's setting the stage for that, even if it's trying to do this in kind of like a, a, a simulated sense, that is that is does not bode well going forward. No, it doesn't. And I think Trump's going to try to do everything he can to stop the election from happening happening i mean like <laughs> we saw it last week with the with uh with you know with um the wisconsin the the the, the election in wisconsin trump is talking about doing adjourning congress which has never been done but it's there right. in the constitution right so he can put through his 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 appointments That's you know right. like so I mean, let's, let's put it like this. This is the kind of thing. Every time I said, like, you know, every time people say, look, he can't do this, can't do X, Y, and Z. Well, okay, let's say he says they're going to postpone the elections. Let's just say that. National emergency, right? And somebody's going to say, he can't do that. And I'm going to say, okay, who's going to hold him accountable? Who's going to tell him no? The Supreme Court won't. That's my point. Who's going to say no? And if Congress at this point... Do you think the Senate, you think Mitch McConnell's Senate is going to say, is gonna, oh, I'm sorry, sir, you can't do that? No. So who is going to be the authority that can stop that? That's what is concerning. That has been all throughout this presidency. People say, oh, you can't do that. And then you find out, oh, well, that's kind of more like a, a way that things have been done. That is a policy. That is not in the Constitution. There's nothing holding it accountable. And the fact is that the sound that I almost played this week, but I just didn't want to hear his freaking mouth again, was uh, was Trump basically saying he has total authority. That he has total authority over this particular crisis. And that he doesn't need to ask. He said, I'll ask, I'll ask Congress, but I don't need to because I have total authority. That, I mean... You know what's funny? Um, I was watching Joy Reid this week. No, oh, was enjoyable. Oh no, it was that? It was hilarious because they had David Frum on. Oh God! And <laughs> so, and she asked, like, Frum, isn't this like unitary executive theory? And Frum, oh, duh, 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 duh. no, this is nothing that Bush never wanted. This is nothing we ever thought about with unitary executive theory. And she's like, no, this is exactly what unitary executive theory is. Like, isn't this the kind of thing that you championed, David? from of the hashtag resistance <laughs> right like and he was just like floundering at, at this like saying no no trump's trump this isn't unitary executive theory because like real conservatives would never stand for what trump's doing right now and we're talking <laughs> yeah how do you tell how do you talk yourself into a ditch basically right <laughs> it was funny because you know this asshat still on fucking tv with respectability you know not that he killed a couple million people in, in Iraq or anything, but... Yeah, well, those are those people, Sean. <laughs> but, but no, it's like... Yeah, so... And then, like, the Pot Save America people are like, well, Trump won't actually use the adjourning of Congress, and it's why, just like... Why on earth? <laughs> why on earth would anybody at this point in, in time still resort to that? Oh, you want to do that? I mean, I, look... I'm sure he does things just because he's like, I mean, this is what he's always been, right? He's like, he's like, I'm sure part of what he was looking at saying, let's give it a shot. What the heck? What's the worst that can happen? (laughs) Right? They could say no and they could make me stop. Let's try it out. Let's see where the gaps are. Let's see where the holes are. Let's see where, like, how, how willing the Democrats are to show that they have a freaking spine and push back. Because you know what? Frankly, right now, they haven't been showing that that much. So yeah. what's what's standing in the way? And, you know, I, and normally what I would say at this point, it's like it's us. Right. I mean, obviously, we got an election coming up and things like this. 
Um, but it's concerning the fact that the normal ways that we would kind of interfere with stuff, <laughs> right, through mass protests, through shutting things down, through occupation, things like this, that's that's not available to us right now. Well, I I, I think that I think that will change. I think there's going to become a point when people just say fuck it and they'll go outside and Fingers, protest. Well, yeah, and then more a whole lot more people die. Mm-mm. I don't know. I it'll, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. Like, like you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, um, I think I I feel like at this point, them sowing um, discontent among the the rabbit right, like not conservative voters, but like the fringe right, the alt right, is their political strategy for the yeah, remainder of twenty twenty. I, I agree. I agree one hundred percent. One hundred percent, and I think it's our job now to think about what are the what are in this situation. What are the pressure points? Where are the sources that power is vulnerable? And that's going to be the point. And I don't think there's an answer to that right now. I think people are trying that out, but I think that is absolutely a critical question right now. It's like um, that we have to kind of rethink this playbook. Uh, what li- like whatever limited playbook it is, um, rethink this playbook in such a way that we um, uh, have a shot. So nothing but a whole lot of happy talk today, everybody. Uh, I, I understand that. Um, but, you know, it's kind of in the space, the space that I'm in. Um, and, uh, you know, it is what it is. But like we're just going to keep this to kind of two segments today. Um, we'll kind of close this one out and then we'll kind of do a little bit stuff in the uh, uh, in today's last call. Just some 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 brief shout outs um, before we call it a day, especially as we're getting started so late. Um, for all the stuff that was going on this morning. So so anything else you got kind of you want to throw on the uh, on the pyre, as it were, before we go to break, Sean? Um, keep an eye out for photos of the protests oh, yeah. from uh, Monday. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There are conservative legislators there that are going to be speaking. So, uh, no, I, it's going to be interesting. Also, uh, one thing we should know about this, we didn't say. This protest the first story that happened and they were mm-hmm. saying thousands of people are planning on showing up showed up in a sinclair uh, owned media outlet in harrisburg abc 27 i believe it's sinclair owned and what they did is they republished a whole entire press release from these gun groups this pro-gun organization that was made to look like a news story so they pr- reprinted verbatim the messaging on this and this is the um this this is the origin of this. So, th- like, the messaging came from this ABC 27 it is now getting shared in all of the media outlets in Pennsylvania, claiming that thousands of people are planning on showing up. No, there we go. So, so like, uh, this is how they're ginning up their support. There you go. We'll definitely be looking forward to those photos from Monday then. So, uh, um so I just thought as uh, as as from what from the degree, the edge of my own happiness right now, um, I want us to remember uh, it should be a theme song kind of moving forward um, when uh, whenever we regain power in this country, whenever we regain the kind of the opportunity to kind of um, take things over. And then somebody from the kind of like center, the either the corporate Democrats or the kind of right wing nut jobs turn to us and say that, I'm sorry, you can't have Medicare for all. I'm sorry, you can't have free college tuition. I'm sorry, you can't afford we can't afford a safety net for you um, that we're just going to kind of put this on blast for them um, and uh, and play us out. So I want to remind you before we go to break that uh, you become a member of Raging Chicken for as little as five bucks a month. Go to patreon.com slash RC Press today. Um, and uh, I want you to have this uh, singing in your brain all day long today. And when everybody says to you, no, no, you can't have that. You can't have your pony. Just remember Jonathan Mann and thank you again, Jonathan Mann, for this song. One, two, three, four. A trillion dollar coins. A trillion dollar coins. Fucking check, mitigate the fucking coronavirus. Two trillion dollar coins, no additional debt. That's the power of the purse, baby. Send your rent. Every person in the country gets a credit card with two grand on it. This isn't hard. And when we say everyone gets one, we mean absolutely everyone. So, mint the trillion dollar coins. You bastards.
This is Kevin Mahoney, editor and founder of Raging Chicken Press. For the past seven years, Raging Chicken Press has brought pull no punches, progressive reporting and commentary to the interwebs. Our long-form investigative pieces, stories that no access journalist wants to touch, or rollicking weekly podcasts strive to advance progressive movements and perspectives rooted in the struggles happening across the country or down the street. We've broken national stories and caused our share of discomfort in the halls of power. If we want a progressive future, we need progressive media. And you can help support Pull No Punches, homegrown progressive media today. Become a member of Raging Chicken Press for as little as $5 a month. Simply go to patreon.com slash rcpress and choose your membership level. We need to make sure to keep the movement in the media and the media in the movement. Best way you can do that is to become a member of Raging Chicken today by going to patreon.com slash rcpress. Thank you for your energy, your encouragement, and your support. Keep up the fight. Welcome back to Raging Chickens Out the Coop Podcast. This is Kevin Mahoney, editor and founder of Raging Chicken Press. Uh, Sean Kitchen has left the building. Uh, he is uh, back, uh, or he's heading back out and uh, getting all prepared for Monday's big protest to open up PA. Yep. God bless the virus, as they say. Uh, anyways, this is supposed to be a happy talk now, happy talk time, right? Um, so just a couple quick things uh, we have today. This is normally in today's last call or every day's, every week's last call. We tend to do with space news. And uh, since the coronavirus stuff has hit, uh, we've basically been focusing on some things that you can do to get by, um, pass the time away and so on. But I'm going to keep it extra short today. Um, I, I forgot to mention this last week's show. Um, and I mean, it's still this whole week, but this is the week that on um, NASA has been celebrating the 50th anniversary of Apollo 13. Um, and it's it's been pretty pretty cool. I mean, I, I had to, I burned a little time this week when I just needed a break just to kind of look at some of the um, the original footage um, that was shot um, during then. And you know, of course, I've seen the movie Apollo 13, um, but actually some of the real time broadcast stuff that was taking place during back then that's actually inside the control room in NASA. Um, hearing the voices from the astronauts um, going on, it's just it's just a remarkable thing. Um, I, I think the thing that stood out to me more than anything else is when um, when the actual explosion happens uh, on uh, on the capsule, I guess, right? Um, not just the capsule, but the module, I guess, um, that was supposed to take them to the moon. Um, they they're kind of what they call this the cryo tubes or something like this. They're trying to cycle them through because I guess there was something jamming up, so they're trying to cycle it through again, and something blew, and then a bunch of their oxygen vented out into space, and so they had to kind of return back to Earth, um, which is not an easy thing to do. Right? So they had to kind of go around the moon and come back and all this stuff. But what was remarkable to me, um, and and something that I, I I don't know, it's just something that. I don't. Comforting is the wrong word, but it just kind of reminds me of a certain kind of ethos about just the everyday work that people do to keep things going on, and say in the government or whatever it might be in some of the agencies. I've always loved NASA, not just because of like the space stuff, but I mean, if you look at the number of women, right? If you look at the number of kind of like like um, non-white folks that work there and young folks that are brought into that agency, I mean, it's just it blows my mind, right? I mean, it's like you know they've been ahead of the game in so many things. I mean, you know, again, the and, and it's and it's about doing something that is not, you know, because you know the other big institution we've got that that does similar kinds of stuff, right? That is about there. You see some of this in the kind of the military, right? Um, but the thing that's always difficult about that, right, is because it's like, yeah, I mean, okay, it's yes, it's been out in front of a bunch of stuff, but it is a, you know, it's 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 the institution you don't want to have to use, right? Because it's about death, right? Yes, it's about protection, but it's also about killing, right? And and, and I'm not saying that as kind of like you know some sort of peacenik over here. I'm not saying it like that, but I'm saying it's like it, it's it says something to us about you know, about us as a culture that that's the only thing that we can kind of like agree upon celebrating, you know, um, 
it bothers me so much that it's like, you know, I, and I look, I have really good friends who are in the military and all this kind of stuff. So I want to be very, very clear. This is not has anything to do about like the military service. I respect that a hundred times over. It just has to do with as a culture. Right. Uh, we've agreed that, like, you know, we can say this is for the troops and everyone rallies around the flag, so to speak. But we're thinking about people that work, say, you know, in the EPA, right, that work in organizations like NASA, the World Health Organization. Right. When we look at, you know, the CDC. Right. The people that have just dedicated their lives to doing the the kind of you know the grunt work of a civilized like culture is like where's the similar respect right and support for them you know and this is um what's his face i'm gonna i'm gonna well i'll come back to it in a second but um so anyways with nasa and uh, nasa has been one of those those places for me and so watching some of this original footage what's astounding for me is like in the midst of this crisis right where people are out by the moon <laughs> right and they have an explosion and a blowout and they know that they do not have sufficient oxygen to carry out their mission to bring them to the um to the moon that they have to get back and they don't even know for sure how much oxygen is gone and if they're going to have enough to get back they don't know. They've never done it before. An emergency mission to have to sl- like use the moon as kind of like a slingshot to get back to Earth in time um, so they don't die. And to successfully land. This is why they call it a successful failure. You listen to the astronauts and you listen to the people in mission control and you watch the footage of them discussion, the, discussing all this stuff. They're so focused and calm in that incredibly stressful situation. It's 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 always astounding to me. There's that, that kind of ethos of kind of like competence, right? You know, NASA's always said that, you know, failure is not an option. Uh, yes, that's a horizon, right? I mean, I get that. You know, I mean, failures, there's always going to be failures, even in the best case scenario. But the idea that we could do that, and it's not about something that is about death. It's about exploration and hope and the imagination and scientific possibilities and all these things. Um, it just, I think that's one of the reasons why I've always been attracted to um, places like NASA. And I, yeah, you know, I have a similar feeling when it comes to thing, places like the CDC, right? Um, the national institutes of health and things that are just, you know, daily working on cures for vaccines and this kind of this, these unsung, you know, I, these, I, I hate using the word heroes right now. Um, I've been thinking a lot about this. I was going to talk about this on the podcast, but I didn't. But the whole idea of like we're heroes, something that bothers me about that language of heroes right now. And I think it's because I'm starting to hear, I'm hearing a little too much of it from the administration at Kutztown University where I work. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just freaking annoyed by it because um, it has a way of, of, of papering over um, what's actually going on. Right, it uses this kind of like catch-all, feel-good word that we should be feeling good about ourselves, right? Um, and we should kind of like you know, like all pull together when there's no, there's been no us, there's been no we between say faculty, students, and the administration, right? Um, it's been you know a battle that we as faculty as students have had to kind of like stake our careers on and stake our time on to stop them from doing the worst things possible so to you know turn around and call me a freaking hero for going and doing this shit online it just kind of it it turns my stomach a little bit i gotta be honest with you so that's my that's my reservation using that word but um i don't quite to use the word about the word but you know these civil servants that are basically doing their work outside of the spotlight they're not looking for people to you know they're, they're not doing what they're doing not because they're trying to be like the next celebrity right they're doing it because of the work you know they're doing it because of the the endeavor and they're doing it collaboratively and collectively i mean um that always gives me hope and you compare that with this model that we've latched on upon in this country that's just about everyone out for themselves screw the government screw collective action me 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 Ironically, these people that kind of look at, you know, say millennials or look at Generation Z and say, look, they're all they only care about themselves. They're all narcissistic. 
the narcissistic people are the freaking libertarian right wing nut jobs that are kind of like the ones protesting out there right now. Um, those that's the me 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 culture. I'm going to get mine and screw everybody else, right? That's not the millennials, right? They've been on the receiving end of that dynamic, right? So you can criticize them all you want for taking too many selfies, but freaking those are the people over there, right? And the people at the top, that the you know the one tenth of one percent that are freaking ripping us off all blind while we kind of give our consent is gross. But anyways, that was not what I was planning on saying. <laughs> Just wanted to say, look, hey, this is a cool week for uh, remembering that kind of a like amazing achievement uh, kind of in, in U.S. history for um, getting the you know Apollo astronauts back home safe. Um, and NASA has released this documentary. They're supposed to have all these celebrations, of course, this week. I mean, it's a big deal. 50th anniversary of that. Um, and it, But instead, they haven't been able to because of the coronavirus. Um, but they did release this. They're doing a whole bunch of cool stuff online. And they did this Apollo 13 um, home safe, which is a lot of that kind of original footage. Um, there's a link for it in the show notes today. Check it out. You know, if you're looking for something um, to poke around. There's been a lot of cool space stuff this week. The other thing that um, tip, I can't remember if I mentioned last week or not, but there's a, a Curiosity Stream, which is a... Um, it's like a documentary channel that you can get like on Roku and probably a bunch of other services and things like this. And you see it online and um, usually it's a subscription. They have a kind of a temporary like free trial, extended free trial on it. Uh, it's worth checking out too as well. They got some great stuff. Um, they've got phenomenal documentaries on the, um, the coronavirus stuff that they're looks seeming like they're putting out like one every other week or something like this. It's been pretty amazing. Um, and some cool stuff around the Apollo 13 um, um, commemorations too. So check that out. Um, two shout outs to free will. Um, free will brewing is still doing their pickup stuff. You can um, still order and pick up at the store. You've got to go to freewillbrewing.com slash store. Um, that will take you to their store and they ask you that you pre-order and prepay for everything to keep it as touchless as possible. Um, but you can uh, go and put in your orders and go and pick it up right at the, the Perkisy store. Um, Garcia's forest is the one that I kind of um, gave you the shout out the, up top was uh, that is a, Hazy IPA brewed with flake oats, flaked oats and wheat hopped with Citra, Mosaic, and Chinook. No milk sugar in this one. Uh, it's kind of a cross between what they say a New Age Hazy IPAs and classic West Coast renditions. It's a good one, but I don't really remember it as 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 much as, as I do some of the other ones that came out this summer, but it, I've had it before. It's, it's, it's a good one. Um, I'm looking forward to picking some of that up. Um, and also, it's kind of cool that they released the uh, current cider uh, mimosa, uh, a new kind of uh, addition to their line that kind of falls in with the um, bees and earth, which we talked about last week. So um, that's pretty cool. But you just go to freewillbrewing.com slash store. You can check it out. It's a nice, easy um, ordering process. You, you follow that link. You get it in the show notes. You follow that link. You go there, um, and you can kind of click on the cans. i got pictures of each of the cans with some descriptions that go through them. Um, my, my recommendations for the week are going to be once again i do think check out the uh, garcia's forest i think you'll enjoy it especially if the weather if the weather turns it starts to get a little bit warmer it's uh that's my memory of it it's like that kind of spring into summer kind of great good feeling kind of beer um i think that i'm gonna, always going to go back to ddh love letter for the 90s that is a fantastic beer um that's also very available in four four packs for takeout um and uh if i had to give you one more they do have here if you're uh, one, check out mimosas. If you're on or the current mimosa, if you're definitely you're doing the cider tip. Um, but if I had to pick up one more side wild card, so if you're not let it ready to let go of the kind of the the, the dark beers from um, from winter time, they do have uh, still available white chocolate cinnamon latte um, uh, cob, which is um, coffee oatmeal brown stout or coffee oatmeal oatmeal brown. Um, that is a fantastic drinking beer. Um, that's there available four packs too as well. So those would be my recommendations for the week for coming free will. Anyways, um, sorry for the kind of uh, a bunch of the downers and a little bit of the late start for today. Um, but I'll just say this at the end of the show today, but I've been thinking a lot about, um, I, I know you've heard me say this before, uh, but I'm trying to really get my, my head around um, directions forward for kind of Raging Chicken and, and how to kind of build out of this. And um, I've got this little voice in my head that's saying right about now that um, – Really, the podcast needs to become the center of the, um, the, the the center of this of this little media enterprise, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, or if or you can tell me if you know otherwise. 
Um, but frankly, the, over the past year, since Sean stopped really kind of, you know, writing for us anymore, I mean, it was just Sean and I were kind of really doing a lot of the writing for it. And we'd have other people who would come in there. Um, but Sean's work was really kind of one of the cornerstones of um, uh, Raging Chicken Press. And, um, and frankly, I didn't think this would be the case, but it's turned out to be pretty much the case. It's been very difficult um, to get other people who are willing to do that kind of work. Um, and, uh, I, it's easy enough. Look, I mean, it would be a piece of cake if I just wanted to kind of bring on some writers just to fill out content for the sake of having content up on Raging Chicken Press, but that's never been what this is about. I mean, this is a mission oriented, um, enterprise, right? Uh, what you hear on here on, on out the coop podcast is a mission oriented, um, enterprise. Um, I, I don't want just kind of like random kind of like, you know, content for content's sake. I want people who are devoted to wanting to build out kind of independent progressive media period probably gonna have to say something more about this on a, a separate podcast but um and, and it's been frustrating i've had you know a couple of people who would join for a short period of time and then would, would drop off or would say they're interested in doing it and then just not kind of and doesn't pan out and that's not that's not to say anything bad about it. i still have to and uh, there's there's one aspect of this is it's still on me um i had reached out to some folks up in the lehigh valley um before all this coronavirus stuff broke and I thought we had potentially a kind of a, a way forward. And that still may pan out, and I might be able to put all this stuff to the side. But I've been thinking about a better, trying to find a better way of kind of consolidating this work and kind of really making, maybe foregrounding the podcast and, and building out some of the podcast stuff and then um, kind of attaching some of the writing to that. Because um, um, I, 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 there's too many things going on uh, for me to try to go out and kind of beg people to write for Raging Chicken. Um, when it doesn't seem that really people are all that interested in it, to be frank with you. I mean, and it's, um, and uh, they're interested, they, they love the reading it, right? But finding people that are willing to do the writing and the reporting and that kind of stuff has been difficult. It's been difficult to find people that are, want to do it consistently. It's been difficult to find people that have the same kind of commitments. Um, I'm, I've had multiple people approach me. They want to write content for it, but they don't give a shit about the politics. Um, really, they just want to get paid, right? Even if it's only 50 bucks a month, right? They just want, that's all they just want to get the content there or someone else is paying them to kind of do those. Con- I mean, I could do that, but I'm not going to. Um, so um, I'm looking for kind of different kinds of partnerships, right? Um, people that are invested in kind of building this stuff out. Um, and I'll be honest with you. It's like, you know, my time has been weirdly stretched in ways that I didn't expect either. So, I mean, having, you know, it'd be one thing if I was, all I had to worry about was teaching stuff online and, you know, teaching that's kind of for making that transition. That's work enough. Um, but then to do that with kind of my kids not in school and things like that at the time, it's like there's not a whole lot of time. And, you know, frankly, I want to spend a little bit of time uh, with my wife when she gets home from work, too, especially because she's stressed out for everything that's going on. So anyways, um, God, I'm kind of freaking a bad mood today. Sorry about that. Um, so anyways, um, we're going to close it out here before I say more things that I'm kind of going to regret saying. Uh, so there we go. Anyways, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for sticking with us on this kind of uh, this this odd rendition of, of Out the Coop podcast. Um, uh, I hope we have more opportunities to kind of connect and do this. Through. I've been even playing around with uh, instead of doing three segments on a show, maybe shifting to a one segment show once in a while and do it as a live um, as a live Zoom win where you can kind of uh, come in and check in. So um, that might happen. We'll, we shall see. Um, I have to run that by Sean and see what he thinks about this. He's been a little bit reluctant to do anything live or to stream live before. Um, but, you know, who knows? Maybe that'll change now. We shall see. Um, we'll go from there. So anyways, this is Kevin Mahoney, editor and founder of Raging Chicken Press. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for keeping up the faith. Um, and thanks for um, everything that you're doing out there. I mean, take care of each other right now. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and, uh, you know, figure out ways that we can keep up the fight. Talk to you next week. See ya! And I'm, I'm, I'm offended that there are members of this General Assembly that want to talk about the lengths of food pantry lines when the, the, we have failed to raise the minimum wage, when we have members of this Senate vote to gut the general assistance program, putting people back to work and rejuvenating an economy, that's doable. We cannot bring people back from the dead. That's impossible. And while we have this back and forth 
Um, losing customers is nothing compared to losing lives. 